Welcome to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika, and with um, tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Uh, before I begin the review, um, child, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm tired as hell, but I know I have a double to do tomorrow. And getting this video out along with trying to catch up to if loving you is wrong tomorrow night would have me doing videos Wednesday. And I don't want y'all to have to wait that long for the uh, review for Love and Hip Hop. So I said since I'm up, I might as well throw something on and come on down and have a little conversation with you about tonight's episode. Before I begin the review, I want to say that thank you to everybody who has watched my Real Housewives of Atlanta finale review. Uh, thank y'all for that. Thank you for keeping it cute down in them comments. Um, also, thank you all for uh, your feedback on my story time today. Just to clarify uh, clarify this right quick, my friend was fully aware that I was telling this story. Uh, the reason why she agreed to allow me to share this with you too was because I did change a little shit around. I kept the basic the same so that we would get, you know, some feedback that would possibly help her with this situation. And so, you know, she's aware that I did that. I didn't just take someone's information and just put it on YouTube. That's not the character that, you know. That's not my character. If I tell y'all it's story time, first of all, foremost, you can guarantee take it to the bank, this shit happen. That's one thing. Two, you can best believe if it does not involve me personally, I have received verbal confirmation for the people who I'm talking about, and they cool with it as long as I do not reveal their true identities. That's something that I would do for anybody, not just people I'm aware of. If I tell your story, I'm going to ask you for permission, especially if I use it in one of my story times. My channel is not, I don't do that over here. I, I don't know, you know, what someone else may be doing, but when I give you a story time, you can believe one thing. You can believe two things. It's true. And I have permission to speak on what it is that I'm speaking on. So with that being said, thank y'all to help for helping. Y'all gotta excuse my face. I actually have a treatment on my face right now. So child, I'm shining and glowing. I'm letting my soul glow, bitch. Okay. Now let's go on and jump into this review because this is a full for now, I mean a full uh review. This is a full recap. I'm going scene by scene, piece by piece. So, we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible so Miss Nika can get her ass to bed. And I hope it's, you know, you, what you guys are looking for, okay? Now, we start back off, or we start this episode off with Stevie J coming home with baby items for little Bunny Bella, okay? He's saying that, you know, he was called 15 minutes after her birth and he and Jocelyn got uh, shit to work on, but hopefully they can do it and be able to co-parent effectively now once inside the home the, the daughters his daughters are there and uh he announces the baby here and they want to know did he uh tell the Eva? he said no now she was aware that jocelyn was pregnant but he never told her you know whether or not the baby was his because at the time he was not aware of whether or not he was the father so they urging him to tell her and he said he would tell her but uh he shows the girls uh, a picture of little Bonnie Bella, and they oohing it on like normal people would do, cause it, they did have a beautiful baby. She just is cute and chubby, and they bringing it out that you know how cute and chunky she is or whatnot. Now Stevie trying to convince them that Jocelyn changed, and you know he said it's something about that mother, that motherhood that has cast Jocelyn in a different light, and he saw a different side to her. Now they asked, will Bonnie be the catalyst to rekindling? Um, their relationship, and he said, no, nah, it's not about rekindling things. They concerned that he will, and and his answers made them doubt that he, you know, that they going to stay broke up because he went from absolutely not when they asked him probably earlier to now he, he's saying no, but it's not that definite no. It's that no that could turn into a yes at any moment, okay? The girls got every right, in my opinion, to be suspicious of, of, of Jocelyn. You know, they did say a lot about each other last year on social media. However, Jocelyn did go below the belt when she accused their father of molestation and even said that the grandfather was aware and a part of it, too. So, Mimi, you we all know Mimi, how she going to deal with this situation. She and Mimi done went and got her restraining order. Oh, Jocelyn got to stay. Oh, that bang ain't right. 
Jocelyn got to stay at least 200 feet away from little Eva. I thank her, too. I'm not certain, but that's how she going to be dealing with the situation, okay? And I see why she did it, because we all have seen, if you got Instagram, you know that Jocelyn and Stevie is back together now. They just had, he just threw a birthday party, okay? Now, the daughter says she, you know, she, she says she and the sisters would like an apology from, uh, from Jocelyn. And, um, Stevie say Mimi and his kids are, are hurt by the maliciousness of, of Jocelyn. And he chalks it up as a moment of temporary insanity. Hopefully they can come back together and figure all of this out and forgive and forget. Because at today's end, they family. Well, she should have thought about that too. Now, child, Tammy say Charlie done talk, convinced her to go on this date with Walker. She not sure she want to go. Uh, it's like letting him back in, and she ain't sure she want to do that. Now, Bambi, who I completely forgot was a part of the cast this season, come to see Tammy. She telling Bambi Charlie convinced her to go on this date with Walker. She says she, she going for the food mostly. Bambi asked her how she really feels about it. She don't think Walker take this separation serious, and she not trying to be mean, but she's hurt, okay? Bambi says in confessional that her and Scrappy never made it down the aisle, so she can only imagine what Tammy must feel like. For uh, To her, for reasons unknown, Tammy and Walker were the ideal couple, and seeing what they going through right now, Further helps her re realize she and Scrappy did the right thing by calling the re the wedding off. They not ready. Why in the hell is Ta Tammy and Walker the idea of a per? I mean, why why would they be representation of re relationship goals when we know that he done cheated on her several times? Girl, okay. Now, Bam tells uh, Tammy Scrappy is very immature and selfish, and they did go to a counseling session with his dad and his stepmom, and she felt out numbers. She feels he always brings his people, so for now, they're not getting married, and she said she had, uh, she had her life. She didn't need all of this drama. Tammy tell her, well, Bambi, get back to being who you really are. You were somebody before you became his girlfriend, so go back to being that person. You don't let a man destroy your emotions by what he's doing. You don't let him take you down. She told her, it's plenty of days I feel like, you know, laying in the bed and just woe is in me because my man and, and I are not on a good terms. He done cheated on me. I feel like just, you know, balling up a big... Uh, she said she feel like rolling up in a big old ball and dying someday, but she stayed focused on her daughter and her work, and that's what helps her get through it. Bambi needs to find herself again, get back out in them streets, and get the bam back on, okay? Now, Josh go, uh, Jock goes over to the radio station. He been so busy, he had time to address Treasure P for all of her fuckery, but now he has. So, he's paid, he tell her, you know, you, because of your mouth, they turned my comedy debut into a pay-per-view featuring Carly Red and Tommy with his baby mama, Cena, in the mix. So, he has time to deal with Treasure because he wants to find out why she all up in his business, spreading his business. He asking her, did she, uh, did she tell? And she admit that she did tell her, Cena, that's her girl. And he tell her that she not, you know... He tell her she had not she had she not ran her mouth, he wouldn't be in any of this mess going on. She talking about it's not her fault he messed with unclassy bitches who have no control and tell him he need to find the type of chick that does have some class if he gonna deal with it. Treasure said all she uh said all she told was that he was messing around with Tommy because um she didn't like, she don't like Tommy, plus Tommy threw them damn grapes at her, okay? She said that Cena, her girl, and she still loves Jock. She felt it was her duty to tell her, and looking like uh, that ain't Cena. And he looking at her like that ain't that ain't your business. Me and Cena ain't together. That's just my baby mama. I don't give a fuck what you think at the end of the day. You should have stayed out of my business. And that's basically how he felt about it and told her that. She telling him that he get around. She thought he was with Carly. Now it's Tommy. And he feeling like she can't, you know, she can talk fast all she want. But 
she got the opportunity at the radio station to intern. So he said he feels she's talented, but this has become a conflict of interest for him because his personal life is his personal life, and that's what he expects. Basically, he firing this hoe, okay? She get mad talking about he, um... She worked her ass off for that station, and for him to, uh, to fire her is wrong. She tell him to continue to work with these weak ass, uh, continue to deal with these whack ass bitch, bitches, and she leave mad. Okay, now Jock was in the studio with Gunplay. He said he feel bad about Treasure, but he can't be focused on all that. It's about the music and his homeboy, Gunplay, who has worked with several people, and he gave a list of all these people Gunplay has worked with came through and you know he want him to listen to his mu new music and he done invited Scrap and Stevie J on down there. Now that Scrap, now that Scrap is say we listening to beautiful music <laughs> but they gotta give a shout out to Stevie J because him and Jocelyn just had this beautiful baby girl. I love how he talk. Okay, Gunplay and Confessionals. So he got a confessional. I'm assuming he's gonna be a part of hip Love and Hip Hop Miami. We've been hearing it was coming, so I'm assuming that that's why we're getting so much of him at this time, right? Well, he um, he said, uh, what did he tell them? Oh, he was just basically congratulating Stevie, okay? Stevie say, uh, Gunplay got a nice joint and he likes it. And, you know, he, of course, like I said, he congratulated Stevie on the birth of his baby. He said it was rocky, but he trying to co-parent with Jocelyn as best he can. Scrappy said, y'all gonna get back together. He said, no, no more beefcake for her. Mm-hmm. He ain't going back and forth with his baby ma uh, mamas. Uh, like Jock do, and Jock then decides this is an uh, opportune time to get his story out about what went down at his comedy event, right? So he telling them, he say he always knew Tommy was trying to play him, so she wasn't trying, she didn't get over on him at all. He knew it, and uh, he knew it was because of some get back from Carly, and he suspected now that everything's out in the open, he probably won't even be hearing from Tommy no more. Gunplay said he headed back to Miami to do his thing. Scrappy said, yeah, well, I've been thinking about that move for a minute now. And since me and Bambi ain't together, um, ain't nothing holding me back. Jock asked, will Bambi be welcome? He said, no, it's off. They tried counseling and she said the weird and off. So he said the weird and off. They threw. He said he throwing himself a bachelor bash. And Gunplay say already, you know. He already got problems with his little shawty uh, being upset about the move back down to Miami. But if Scrappy want to turn up, he with that. Gunplay is very animated to be light-skinned as he is, child. It's something we must see is if he's on fucking uh, Love and Hip Hop Miami. Child, I got to see him. He said he can be a player from the Himalayas with Scrappy if that's what he want to do. Scrappy said, hell yeah, and I want you to perform as well, and he with that, okay? Now, Stevie say he going to bring his new audience, his new artist, the Panamanian goddess, Estelita. <laughs> Scrappy said, you had, you went from having a Puerto Rican princess to now a Panamanian goddess. Scrappy said, hell, I don't give a damn. The motor merrier. Bring her ass on, okay? Now, child, we go over to Mama D. Mm, mm, mm. Her and Ernest get, done got into it, and he ain't been home in two days. She know he at his mama house and admits that she enjoyed her peace, but now it's time to uh, track his ass down. She telling the dog she got with him, be careful. You don't want to get no roaches in that, in your fur. Child, as they seek out the dog's dad, which is Ernest. Child, I was hollering. Mama D said, what woman would want to leave a peaceful place, a beautiful place like West Palm Beach, to move into a condo in the hood with roaches that cohabit cohabit uh, cohabitate? I feel like, child, Mama D was really going in on this lady house. She said the only woman that would do that is a woman that want her son to replace her husband. Y'all, I must say, uh, Mama D looked very good. I don't know what she been going through or what she, what processes she been doing, but her hair, makeup, and clothes was on point, and she looked very, very nice to me. Now, Ernest said D creeping around his mama place like a burglar, and, um... 
He tell us that he came to his mama house because D was getting on his nerve. Shit, they arguing and shit now. He say playing, uh, she say he playing model and made for his mama. He say my mama's elderly. He says his mama appreciate him, something that D has never been able to do. She says she should, he should be at their palace with her. It's been two days. Um... He said she about ain't even fucking noticed he wasn't there until now. And he told her, look, I do love you, but I love my mama more because she understands my struggle and what I've been through. Mama D said a man's supposed to take care of his home, and if you're going to be tricking for a woman, you might as well trick for me too. He said he don't see why she come there with all that damn bullshit and, and talking crazy. Mama D said, well, okay, come on, uh, Travis or Tyler or whatever the dog name is. She said her presence was no longer needed there. She called him a mother's boy, and he said, you can call me what you want. She tell her he needs to stop running behind her son, and she just basically leaves her. Now, we see Tammy, Rashida, and Carly meet up, and Carly announced that Jocelyn has had her baby, and they talk about how Mimi going to handle that situation because they know that Mimi hates Jocelyn and don't want her near her or Steve, her and Stevie's daughter either, okay? They asked Carly, where is Mimi? And she said, well, y'all ain't heard about what went down with Mimi, Melissa, and them. Bone carrying bitch. I told you this cougar pussy bitch is always on the prowl. Carly tell them about Melissa smashing Arian and Mimi. And so it's kind of beef there. Plus Melissa cool with Jocelyn and and she tell uh Tammy, you know, I gotta address something with you in reference to Tommy on this situation. And um Okay, Tammy saying confessional that she hoped that Carly and Tom she know Carly and Tommy beefing, but she don't have nothing to do with that. Her relationship with Tommy is totally different. It don't have nothing to do with Carly Red's beef with her. And I, I that you know what, that's one thing I noticed on these reality shows that I don't understand. I don't understand it. Now I was just talking to someone that I'm very close to tonight and I don't fuck with a group of people, but he fucks with them still, okay? And we, as we were talking, he was able to be still cool with me, but not, you know, run down or allow no run down of them, which I wasn't going to run the motherfuckers down no way, but I like the fact that he said, I told them the same thing I tell you. I still fuck with you. You say what you got to say, feel how you going to feel. But I'm not going to allow you to run her down. That's the same thing here. Just because Carly don't like Tommy don't mean Tammy and Tommy cannot have a friendship that has nothing to do with Carly Red whatsoever. They ain't going to be talking about her or none of this shit. But Carly going to tell her, you just don't need to be friends with her. And Tammy want to know why. <laughs> they ain't got nothing to do with you. She say Dime told her they went to Tommy t a wine tasting, and that's when she told her they don't need to be friends. And Tommy and Tammy say why? <laughs> and I asked that question too. Cena told Carly Tammy fucked Jocelyn as well back in the day, and Rashida said so. You and Cena cool, and according to Carly Red, her and Cena been cool before Cena even touched Jock. I ain't never heard that before. Have y'all? Hmm. Hmm. She replayed the comedy shit, and Tammy asked Carly, now what did you say first? Because she know her friend. Carly repeated what she said, and Tammy said, Carly, childish. It's fair play. Carly messed with Scrap, so Tammy messed with Jock. They both petty, but it was a fair thing. It was a fair exchange. She says, Tommy is not really into Jock and was just using him as collateral damage to get back at Carly. And Rashida asked if she had spoken to Jock about it. Carly said, no. She plans to to, and Rashida said, well, hold up, Scrappy having this kind of, some kind of bachelor party, bachelor bash or something. She's not in full agreement with it, but uh, Tammy's shocked because Scrappy been calling her up at 4 and 5 o'clock in the morning telling my little sis I need her in my life. So she's con she confused as to why, why we having this party now, okay? Mm, mm, mm. She say Jai probably will attend, and she not sure if Carly want to talk to him there or if it's even appropriate. But more importantly, she not sure if Kirk going to be there, so she need all her girls to be there to help her get through it, and they agree, because Tammy wasn't going to go. 
Now, Scrap and say he hate what Rashida and Kurt going through, but when they meet up, when they met up, he, uh, it was some things that, you know, Kurt said about the big sis that made him glad that him and Bam called it out. He said, uh, he's not, uh, ready to, he's not ready for marriage, but at least, uh, you know, he found that out before he actually put his foot into that water. Now, he about to meet up with my dukes. He got a lot to run to her, and he's not sure she gonna like everything, but, uh, he say, a uh, man gotta do what a man gotta do. So, he gets there, and he starts telling her, uh, it's over with him and Bam. He said it was her fault. He was meddling at first with her. But says uh, he was joking. Said it's not her fault. Him and Bam was going to split anyway from what it looked like it was happening. Okay? So he ain't blaming her. He he tells her that he throwing this bachelor bash going away type of thing. And she asked him where he going. And he said Miami. And she spit her water out talking about why. He said because of money and opportunity. So she said, so you going to just leave me here by myself? He said, no, nah, I'm leaving you here with your husband. He said, I will talk to Imani along with Ern and uh, uh, I'm going to talk to Imani, but I invited Ernest along with you to come to this party. She said, back that shit up. Hold on. She said, Ernest at his mama house. He loved his, He said he loved his mama more than me. And Scrapper said, but that's your husband. She said, I was misled. <laughs> Baby, I love me so Mama D. She be killing me. She said, uh, tell him, uh, she told Scrapper to uninvite Ernest and let him stay with his mammy. Scrapper said he'll see what he can do. And he says, I invited Rashida and Kirk. And Mama D asked what's been going on with them. Scrappy says, uh, it's a girl claiming that she got a baby by Kurt. Mama D is shocked by this. Uh, he said he went to see Rashida. She was all heartbroken and things, but when he met her with Kurt, Kurt was laughing and shit, saying that, you know, he loved Rashida, but, and he was surprised because what's the but for? And I asked that same question. Okay, Scrappy say that they been going through it, and Kirk, uh, so they been going through it, and Kirk basically feel uh felt alone and if she want a man that don't cheat it's some things she gotta do he said kirk told him they ain't had sex in nine or ten months and he felt like rashida was uh crucifying him like just like they did jesus mama d say um let me find out kirk done smooth talk some girl into uh getting pregnant by him and and not a wench don't want to take no, you know, he done made a, what she say? Got some girl the wench pregnant and got the nerve to talk shit about Princess Rashida. <laughs> Everybody in the palace let Mama D tell the baby. Scrappy goes on to say, Kirk refusing DNA. And Mama D say, oh, he can be made to take that. Scrappy say he knows, uh, he know that, but he feel like Kirk don't want to take it because the little whippersnapper might be his, you dig? <laughs> I love the way these people talk. Mama D says she need to talk to Charlene and see what's going on. And uh, Scrappy said, I would love if you didn't do that. But she ain't making no promise. So we already know Mama D is going to holler at Charlene about this situation. So it wasn't no surprise to me when she popped up at press, okay? Now, Tammy and Waka, they go on this dinner date. And at first she thought it was just a movie theater, but come to find out he done rented out the movie theater unbeknownst to her. Once she found out she was feeling that shit, he did a, a on the screen a flashback of their life together, knowing that women are emotional. He playing uh, on her like that, you know, almost about to get her to break down. She said her wall's starting to break down right now. She said she a punk. I said, I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to, honey. Then he gives her the passwords to all his social media, and she like, I don't want to be going through your stuff, you know, for the rest of my life. He said, it's no secret now, and she appreciate the effort, but, you know, he been, he been, hmm. oh, she appreciate the effort, but they've been there before, and he says he's learned, well, that now that the depth of how bad he hurt her and Charlie, and he can't do that to the people that he love, okay? She she said in order for her to get past this, they must rebuild trust and ask how do they rebuild that. And he said, by you letting me back in the house. Hmm. 
she asked, uh, can he do that without being in the house? He said, not really, because I don't be around you like that. She admits she misses Walker a lot, and so does Charlie, but she unsure letting him back in her house just so soon. He said, well, look, I'm about to go on tour to Europe for two weeks, and uh, why don't you come along with me? She said, uh, I ain't going to be able to do that because I got work responsibilities here, so I ain't going to be able to do that. And he said, well, I'll go on the tour, and toward the end, you can let me know if I'll be coming home to you or, you know, or you're not feeling it. And she said that she let him know, but she wasn't stupid. She took a fucking photo uh, graph of them damn <laughs> them damn passwords he had up on that screen that they blurred out from us. She said she can have a, uh, he asked for a kiss. She said she can, he can have a pet, not a full kiss, okay? So we know they back together again anyway. So this is kind of reason why I have such a problem with the real, I mean, with Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Because almost all these storylines, we currently know what's going on with these folks current day. Because they put all this shit on IG. We see it. We know they back together, you know? So, you know, that shit be kind of played out by the time we see it on TV. We try to go along with the storyline like we don't know, but deep down inside, we do, child. Now, Mama D go see Charlene. She say her and Charlene haven't, had, haven't always been cool, but they love their kids. And she there to offer love and support. Charlene was apprehensive because, remember, last time Mama D came to press, she built a nest and accused uh. Charlene up trying to mess with her husband. She said they worked that out though. So now Mama D runs down what she knows, uh, and the fact that Kurt refusing the DNA. But Charlene say she gonna take uh she going to take me uh he gonna take one because after Carter was born, he made well he took a DNA on that little boy accusing Rashida of cheating on him. So he gon he gonna see her. Mama D say Scrapper told her that Kirk said if Rashida don't want to share him, she need to do something, uh do something as well. She says Kirk and Rashida Kirk says Rashida treated him like the maid and refused sex. Now he's been nailed he's being nailed to the cross like Jesus and Charlene said good. That's what she need to do to his ass. Charlene said he may need need to hurry and uh, fix this because if he don't, she coming for his ass and that's how she feel about it. Now let's go to uh Scrapper's Bachelor Bash and it's packed house and they celebrating and he said he looking around and he not sure Kirk gonna even show up to this event. Of course he ain't gonna come. Mama D takes the mic and introduces gunplay so he does his performance or whatnot, you know. Scrap is saying in confessional that, of course, he going to come back and see his little princess and his mom. But right now, a new change of scenery is what he need, okay? She said that she and uh, Bam and Scrap... Okay, he said him and... Uh, hmm. Did I write some shit? Okay, Mama D say that Bam and Scrap is over and ain't no use to uh, trying to hold on to something that's dirt and buried. Uh, like, for instance, her and Ernest and Kirk and Rashida. <laughs> Some, she said sometimes you need to know when to move on and sometimes you need to push. So, you know, she got a surprise for old Scrap, okay? Now, Scrap and Gunplay go over to Rashida and Tammy table and she, uh, she came... Because Rashida needed her to, but she not liking this party. It's disrespectful to Bambi, and he gonna hear what the hell she got to say. She told him she don't like how this plays on Bambi, and that she's a good woman. He said he loves Bam, but she said ain't no way, and he agreed. It is what it is. Stevie comes with Estelita, the Panamanian goddess, and she said she he handpicked her because... Uh, to be on his new label, Danger Zone, the Latina, uh, he gonna, she gonna be the first Latina performance on that, on that label. He said he handpicked her because she beautiful, sexy, and then she got that salsa flavor, okay? Now, he introduces her to everyone as the Panamanian goddess, and Scrappy laughing, saying, he, 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 
He can go with that, okay? That's what he said. I can go with that. Tammy asked, uh, what's the difference between the Puerto Rican princess and a Panamanian goddess? And she stands up talking about, uh, is it hard for you to figure it out? And I, yeah, bitch, because, okay, you look a little bit more natural, but you still ain't shit. We want to know, can you sing, bitch? Can you rap? What can you do? What you do? Is you a Gloria Estefan? What, what are we working with here? Where's your talent? Don't tell me your talent lies in your look because you just another Jocelyn. If that's the case, then. Child, whatever. Girl, you the same. Sit your ass down. Rashida asked, is this a relationship or a business partnership? She said they making bu music, so it's professional. Tammy asked if the new how the new baby was, and he said that he good. You know, the baby's good, and they trying to do what's necessary to co-parent with, uh, you know, Bonnie Bella for the best. And Tammy said, well, at least you own it. And Rashida said, yeah, you not, you not like everybody else. You know, some other folks. Namely, talking about Kirk ass, okay? Rashida says, tonight to show support. She did, she showed up tonight to show support for her boy, uh, Scrap. Tammy asked, where is Kirk? Uh, and she says, she don't know. She don't know. She won't know why he not there supporting. He probably somewhere hiding. That's when Miss Treasure P comes over to Jock and asks him, can she speak to him privately? Scrap is saying, lately, Jock been doing his thing with the latest. But uh, he asking Treasure, what up, okay? Now, they go over and she apologizes for her involvement in his business. She's asking what can she do to get her job big. She willing to get on her knees and that crazy bitch did it. He told her, girl, get up off your knees. People starting to look at you and shit. He said, look, I know you're trying to work. You know, you look like you, you bought that life with this business. So just come on back down to the station Monday and we'll take it from there. He said, but leave the bullshit in the past, uh, Treasure, because if I feel like any bullshit is coming into play, you out of here. So she get her job back. Mama D takes the mic again and she says that she may, uh... She may have overstepped her boundaries, but she wanted to invite someone who wanted to speak. And she called Charlene, uh, Charlene to the mic. Rashida at the bar stand, and Scrap is sitting at the little table. He was sitting there with Rashida, and them talking about, wow. Charlene comes up in there, and she say she is here to address her son-in-law, Kirk, and calls him out. But Kirk is not in the building. She said, oh, it, he might be smart for not doing that, but see, his friend's here. And so I'm going to get a message to his ass one way or the other. She said, um, she said, uh, she's not going to go into everything too deep, but she is urging Kurt, her son-in-law, the maggot. And you know when she said maggot, everybody in the stage, I mean the audience talking about ooh and ah and shit because she didn't. Talk, said this man was a, a maggot. She said that the most, you know, the only thing he can do that will settle all of this shit is take a DNA test. Why did they bring a DNA test to the stage on a silver platter? Now she said she wasn't gonna go deep, but she she brought this this DNA subject up and brought the kid to the place. Talking about she know Rashida don't like that kind of shit. Rashida like I guess the you know. That's my cue to leave because her mom upset and although it's on her behalf, she knows she don't like to get down like that. It's inappropriate, so she needs to go get something, you know, off her chest, go on, do it, but she out. She chunking deuces. She ain't finna deal with that. Charlene had that DNS on that silver platter. Now, Jock said uh, they all want Kirk to take that DNS, but bringing it out on a silver platter ain't gonna make him do it, and I agree. She shows the DNA test to the crowd and tell friends his friends tell him to take the test because she coming from him and mama d was in full agreement with that shit and had the crowd start to chant dna child and it went off i said this is crazy as hell now you say you don't want to you know you don't want to go too deep because you know your daughter how she feels about these type of things but yet you just put her on blast mom uh mama Shirley girl if, if he gotta take a dna Apparently, you saying that he done cheated on Rashida. Everything's out in the open, and it's a child involved. Girl, you crazy as hell. But I enjoyed this episode. I did, even though I know some of the storylines are just out there. I got me a nice kiki off of how Scrappy talked. 
how how crazy Jockey is, because Jockey is comedic relief for this damn show. I had myself a good time with this show tonight, so I hope you all enjoy the review, and remember the depth of your struggle will always determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share my video on all of your social media platforms. I will return to you all on Wednesday. I will not be uh, uploading anymore. Well, it's Tuesday morning now, but I won't upload again until Wednesday. And that's when I come back to do If Loving You Is Wrong. Y'all have a peaceful night. And I'll see y'all when I see you. Peace.